Hello folks and welcome to GED Microlearning. My name is Dr. MCR and this is GED Math Test 16. Question 1 is a basic arithmetic question that looks at order of operations. It asks you to solve the following. 6 multiplied by 2 minus 3 plus 4. All right, so what you have to remember is that in math, we do things in a specific order or sequence. It's kind of like when you get dressed in the mornings, right? You do things in a sequence. You usually put your um, pants on and then your shoes, right? Not the other way around. So in math, we do things in a similar fashion. We do it in order. And what you have to remember here, this is really handy, is this mnemonic, PEMDAS. And this basically is telling you in what order you have to do the operations in an equation. Okay, so P stands for parentheses, then you do the exponents, multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction. So in our problem, we would first do the parentheses, which is 2 minus 3. So that gives us 6 multiplied by minus 1 plus 4. So cross that out. We're done. Do we have any exponents? No, we don't. Done. Next step, multiplication. So we would multiply 6 by minus 1. That gives you negative 6 plus 4. Done. No division here. Cross that out. And then that leaves us with adding those two terms. So it's minus 6 plus 4 is minus 2. So your answer would be B. Again, this little mnemonic trick, PEMDAS, super useful for these problems. I'll leave you a little card in the top right of the screen uh, if you want to do more order of operation problems or you want to, you know, try some harder ones. Question two is from the applied arithmetic portion. Mean, median, and mode. Sammy played a video game five times. His scores were 172, 73, 112, and 105, and 89. What was his median score? All right, so here what I did to you is I did something to uh, trick you and trip you. You're welcome. And this is what it is. I introduced this term five times. Why did I do this? Because when you're in a hurry or when you're stressed, we're usually not super focused. So a lot of folks read this question and they think, oh, they're giving me five scores. All I have to do is divide it by five. Okay, and find the average. The average is the mean. And here the question is asking you for the median. Okay, the median score. And median is the number in the middle. How do you find the median? Very simple. You take all the scores and you arrange them in order from the smallest score to the largest score. And your middle number is going to be the one in the middle. Okay, so in this case, 105. All right, so remember always, the middle number is median, the average is mean. Question three is an algebra problem that looks at rational expressions, and it looks absolutely horrible, <laughs> all right? So first things first, do not stress, um, and just make sure that you, you know, take things step by step. All right, so it tells you 10 divided by x squared minus 2x minus 8 divided by 5 uh, divided by x minus 2. All right, so what you have to remember here is that whenever you are dividing fractions by each other, dividing a fraction is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. So what is the reciprocal? The reciprocal is when you take the second fraction and you flip it. Okay, so instead of having 5 divided by x minus 4, you're going to have x minus 4 divided by 5. And instead of dividing, you are now multiplying. Okay, so this is what is known as multiplying by the reciprocal. All right, next issue, we have this mess that we have to deal with. So in this case, what you're trying to do is that you're going to try to factor out this trinomial. And the first thing that you want to do is that you want to look at the last number. In this case, it's minus 8. And find numbers that, when multiplied together, would give you minus 8. So in this case, we would have 1 multiplied by minus 8. That's minus 8. Negative 1 multiplied by 8 also gives you minus 8. Minus 2 times 4 also gives you minus 8. And 2 
multiplied by minus 4, which also gives you minus 8. The next step is that you're going to add each of these rows of numbers. And you want the numbers that add up to this middle term, okay, so minus 2. And I'll show you why in a second. So let's add the first row. So we would say 1 plus minus 8, that's minus 7. Minus 1 plus 8, that's 7, so we don't want any of these. Then minus 2 plus 4, that gives us 2. And 2 minus 4, that gives us negative 2. So those are the two sets of numbers that we are interested. Why are we interested in them? Because it turns out that when we factor that trinomial, x squared minus 2x minus 8, we would use these two numbers to write x plus 2 multiplied by x minus 4. All right? So if you don't believe me, just stop the video right now and multiply those two brackets out, and you'll notice that you'll get x squared minus 2x minus 8. All right, so let's go back to our, um, our expression, and we're going to simplify that to our factored form, which looks like that. And notice that we have an x minus 4 on the right side and an x minus 4 on the left side. Terrific, and they're dividing by each other, which means that we can do this, get rid of them. Next step, let's look at our whole numbers. So we have 10 divided by 5. That's 2. So our answer would be 2 divided by x plus 2. Okay, all right, so as I said, this is a trick to um, get you know, factor trinomials. Sometimes you can't use this method because uh, you have what is known as a prime pro polynomial, which is irreducible. But for the most part, uh, a lot of times you can use this technique, which you saw is simple and pretty straightforward. Okay, question four is an algebra question that looks at an inequality. 10x plus 120 is equal to 540. Then x is equal to what? This is basically a bread and butter problem of algebra, okay? So what you have to do here is isolate the x. So how would you do that? Well, on the left side, you would have to get to rid of that 120. How do I get rid of 120? I subtract 120. If I'm subtracting on the left side 120, I have to do that on the right side, okay? Why are we doing this? Again, because minus 120 plus 120 would give you zero, so you can cross those two terms out. Um, and then that leaves you with 10x is equal to 420. All right, so the next thing is that we have to get rid of that 10 that is multiplying by x. So how do we get rid of it? Well, we just divide by 10, okay, on both sides. Why are we doing this? Because if 10 you divide 10 by 10, it gives you 1, so you can cross that out. And now you have that x is equal to 42. Answer B. The final problem is a geometry problem. And remember, always with geometry, they do give you the formulas to, you know, all the equations that, you, uh, you know, all the formulas that you need. Um, so you don't have to memorize anything, but very important that you are able to apply those formulas. Otherwise, you know, there's no point. Okay, so the question says, if a cube has a volume of 125, which of the following is the width of one side of the cube? So what you have to remember here is um, that when you look at a cube, if you look at the image on the right, the height, the width, the length, they're all the same, okay? So whatever side you look at in a cube, it's going to be the same. So in order to find the volume of a cube, you would just say that it's equal to x cubed. Another way to write that down would be to say that the volume is equal to the height times the width times the length. If we go back to our problem, all you have to do is take one of the answers and just plug the, those numbers into this equation. So if we take 5, for example, we would say that the height is 5, the width is 5, and the length is 5. So we'd write our equation like that, and our answer would be 125. Okay? So your correct answer would be A. All right, folks. Well, I hope you found that useful. As always, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for watching. Have a terrific day and stay positive and stay strong. Have a good one.